All right, so here we go. Work continues on this Jabru line boring. I've uh, got a game plan here, which I'm pretty confident with. So just to recap, I've had this in the vertical milling machine and I've bored that out accurately, very accurately, to within a hundredth. The first three journals, that one there, the next one along, and the next one along as well. So actually it's, it's, it's one, two, and three. This long boring bar with the head on it there was able to get to those three bearings. One, two, and three. Yeah, it's important that I could get to those three bearings and bore them all the same because that's going to be, those three bearings are going to act as the support for my boring head as I continue to drive it through manually. And that process is going to involve this. So I've taken the boring head off my tool out of the machine and that's the boring head there. I was considering using that one, which would be okay, but this is the one I'm going to use. This is the one I used prior. prior. Now what I've done is I've cut a piece of chromoly steel here, it's hollow bar, which is ideal. And uh, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to uh, face all this up and turn it and grind it so it's exactly this diameter here, which will be, uh, which is 52 mil. But I'm going to make it 52 mil minus maybe 0.5 of a millimetre. That's five hundredths. Take a millimetre and divide it by a hundred. I'm going to take five of those off the diameter of this. And that'll allow that shaft to run in those first three bearings with quite tight tolerance with a little bit of oil on them. And then the boring head is going to be attached on the end of that accurately. So I'm going to have to make a sleeve and uh, accurately put it on there, back off the head so I can come up on the size accurately. It's got a micrometer there that works in hundreds of a millimetre. So that'll work well. And then what I'll do is I'll pull them. This has got an M12 thread in it. So what I'll do is I'll use that drive dowel there and I'll drill a little appropriate uh, mating hole for that, that uh, drive dowel. That'll do all the driving and then this will be an accurately um, bored sleeve in here. And then I'll run an all thread right here and have an accurate nut on the back and that nut is actually what we're going to drive it through. And then my trusty worker will have, a, will have a plate across here with a jack screw on it and as he winds the jack screw out slowly, which will be pressing against the head of my uh, boring bar here, uh, then that'll allow it to come out slowly. And that should be that should be ideal. And then we'll drive it through here. And of course, it's bearing on the first the first uh, journal which is going to cut, which will be the fourth one, somewhere around here, um, will be will be with the boring bar um, supported on these first three journals. And then of course, as it bores the next one, it'll be supported on the fourth journal and fifth journal. So it's supporting its way all the way along till it pokes its head out here at the very end of the process. Um, so that, I expect that should work uh, quite well. So now the task is to turn this up, machine it, get the boring head on, and then uh, we'll progress from there. So, uh, yep, that's the plan. So that's looking good. Ah! All right, so here's the setup. I've been at this all day. And uh, what time is it now? Nearly eight o'clock. So, yeah, absolutely wrapped. Nice when a plan comes together. So here's my ground boring bar I made. Spent all day today, and that length of that covers the entire length of the case. In fact, you could still use that on the six cylinder because there's plenty of bearings in support. So as you might recall, the first strategy I did was put in the milling machine and mill as deep as I could with this extension here, which took me down to about three bearings, which was perfect because those three bearings offered the support I needed to get this, this little baby started. So by the time that hit the, the next bearing, the fourth bearing in there, it was already well supported. And then as I bought it through, it just supported itself all the way through. And it went absolutely perfectly. So here's my boring head. Took the boring head off the, the milling cutter and I made my own long shaft here, boring bar. The boring head can leave it at the end there. The pins are bore, very accurate. 
Each one of those increments there is a hundredth of a millimetre. If you can see there. Uh, right where I've got it there now is right on size. So I backed it off about half a turn and just crept it up in 500th increments till I hit that size. And basically this shaft here is five hundredths under size. So you know you're on size when this goes through. If this doesn't go through, it acts like a gauge, a go gauge. Worked out perfectly. And the way I did it was I ran this in with a drill, just like this, at a, just a moderate speed. And then I used this jack screw here, the setup I've made at the back here, you see here? And so this jack screw was wound all the way in. That would go all the way into the first bearing or the third bearing, or sorry, the fourth bearing. I started at that bearing right there. So I had to cut, cut these ones in the milling machine. That one I cut with my tool and that one and then the last one. And I used this jack screw with that pad on the end of it there to wind it through. So as I was drilling from this end, my other hand I just reach over here and slowly wind that out to keep, to keep the feed going. And I got a really nice finish, you can see in there, got a beautiful finish. I mean, these boring heads are really professional, they're spot on. Um, yeah, and it was actually, it worked absolutely perfectly, you couldn't get better. So I just put a bit of engine oil here, I'm working with one hand, so excuse me. I'm, so I put a bit of oil on the bearings as I went, and here, and here. It's all done now, so. Uh, now what I'll do is, again, working with one hand, I'll just remove this pad here, this uh, stopper, and I'll swing it out of the way and I'll show you. Now I've measured every one of these journals with my dial bore and micrometer. And I've got them absolutely perfect within a hundredth. So this is officially line board now. You'll see now when I put the, uh, pull that out of the way, right. So you'll see now when I put the boring head in, here very carefully, because it is still on size. I'll get that started in there. There she goes. As I said, it's a perfect fit. Perfect fit. I'm sliding that boring head all the way along. See, I cut each one as I went. And then this one goes down here. And then all the way out the other side, look. All the way right through. So that boring bar now, is right through the entire case and it spins beautifully. Right, you can see that? So we have that, that bar, which is exactly 52 minus 05, couple of thou, is right through there, see? So there's this case is officially line board. That shaft could not spin like that. That shaft could not spin like that. If it wasn't, if it wasn't straight, it'd be it'd be picking up and that spins beautifully look at that that's where the crankshaft's going to go or oh, well the crank bearings job done righto so that went to plan now next is these cam journals the way i'm going to do the cam journals is very similar strategy to this a ground bar picking up the first two bearings which i'll do in the milling machine first and then the last three will be done cantilevered as the a boring head goes through and in that instance i'm going to use a a reamer I'm going to attach a reamer to a shaft and continue it through. So it won't be a boring head, the reamer will be the boring head. It'll still be cantilevered though, and that reamer will go start here and go all the way through, and then at the end of that, the ground shaft should slide just like this one here, but just in a smaller scale. All right, as soon as we get this cam journal um, machined, line board, we put the engine back together, I think the customer will have an engine that's like new because previously this crankshaft was nipping up, there was fretting all over the crankcase, it was a bit of a mess. So it's all beautifully machined now. As I said, this has all been line ball with these bolts fully torqued. So there should be no surprises when we split it apart, put the crankshaft and cam in, and then finish it off. All right, take it easy. Bye-bye.